Hello and welcome to the videos on securitytube.net. This is part 2 of IEEE 802.11 W amendment which is all about management frame protection. In last video we have seen why to have 11W and how it is implemented. In this video we will concentrate up on exact implementation and in the latter part we will talk about Cisco MFP which is a Cisco proprietary implementation of IEEE 802.11 W. Now to start with how exactly RSNA handshake will be handed out in 11W. Now currently this four way handshake confirms the following things to each of the, each of the parties. First is everyone gets confirmation that the other party is holding the PMK or pairwise master key. Second is each party gets the confirmation that the PMK holding by the other party is live and fresh. Now with the help of PMK either party derives the pairwise transient key or PTKs and they also install the encryption and integrity keys into IEEE 802.11 state machines. Now there is one more important thing which is carried out in this four way handshake is the group temporal key and group temporal key sequence number or uh, sequence number derivation. This sequence number is delivered from the by the authenticator to the supplicant. So after the four way handshake is successful either parties have the PMK, PTK, GTK and the GTK sequence number. Now IEEE 802.11 W extend this four way handshake to transport the integrity GTK or IGTK and IGTK sequence number from authenticator to supplicant. So after PTK and GTK exchange, IGTK or integrity GTK exchange will take place. Now it is also used to validate the RSM capabilities and it is also used to confirm the correct cipher suits are used or not. Now let's see how exactly GTK and IGTK are incorporated in 4-way EPOL handshake. This is a pictorial representation of 4-way EPOL handshake. In first and second message as usual, a nonce and S nonce are being exchanged between supplicant and authenticator. Supplicant is typically a station and authenticator is typically an access point. Now after exchanging a nonce and s nonce, the other two vectors are MAC addresses of supplicant and authenticator and pairwise master key PMK. With these five values, supplicant as well as authenticator can derive the PTK independently. After deriving PTK independently, Authenticator translates GTK and IGTK to the supplicant and the fourth message is the success message. After this successful four-way EPOL handshake, now supplicant and authenticator can install independently PTK, GTK and IGTK into their state machine and this is the end of IEEE 802.1x authentication and after this 1x successful authentication and four-way handshake, four-way handshake now management frame protection or MFP can take place. Now a million dollar question whether my AP supports MFP or management frame protection or not. A very important question. How to know it? Look for RSN IE or RSN information element in AP's beacons. Now in the beacon frame the RSN IE will be present in a tagged parameters in variable length field. Now the presence of RSN tag guarantees that AP supports 11i framework or WPA2 framework. Now inside this RSN tag look for RSN capabilities. Now in RSN capabilities bit 7 or B7 is robust management frame protection bit. If this robust management frame protection or MFP protection bit is set then the AP is supporting 11w architecture. If this bit is not set or this bit is equal to 0 then the AP is not supporting MFP and the management frames will not be protected if a client or station is associated with this AP. Now without discussing Cisco MFP the discussion about MFP or 11W draft cannot be complete. Now Cisco MFP is a proprietary pre-standard implementation by Cisco. It is supported by Cisco's WLC or wireless LAN controller 4.1 and all above versions. For client support, 
Cisco has developed its own standard CCX V5 or Cisco compatible extension version 5 and any client which is CCX V5 will be supporting Cisco MFP protocol. Unfortunately, currently there is only Cisco ABG client which is CCX V5 client. So currently only CCX V5 client can have the management frame protection. Now Cisco uses its own proprietary vendor specific information element for exchanging the MFP capabilities. So Cisco is currently not using the RSN which is a standard 11W implementation but currently it is using its proprietary implementation. Eventually as standard gets ratified Cisco has to change to this RSN standard implementation. Now attackers and wall drivers have to be more creative. Deauth attacks and disassoc attacks will not work anymore since Deauth and disassoc packets are now encrypted. Now Deauth is generally the first step in many attacks for compromising the network for wall driving etc. Like first Deauth the client from the access point then see the association handshake between station and the access point and either you can do this association handshake again and again or capture few packets in this association handshake or after immediately after the association handshake and replay those packets again and again was the simple mechanism for cracking keys etc. Now that will not work anymore. So you have to be for intruders and wall drivers you have to be more careful and more creative and a normal user will be little secure. It is just little more because 11W is not a panacea. There are control frames, there are some physical attacks which are still easy to launch. Like if someone launches RTS CTS flood attack, the whole network will be jammed. So these jamming attacks and etc attacks can be still possible but the end user is, is still little more secure. Now comes the interesting and exciting part in this year's DEFCON that is DEFCON 16 2008 at Las Vegas USA we will be announcing an implementation flaw in Cisco MFP and thereby a possible attack on Cisco MFP. I will upload the video from DEFCON 16 as and when it is available to me. This presentation is on autoimmunity disorder in wireless LANs. As in the body cells, autoimmunity phenomena is present in which the cell will attack the healthy cell itself due to some stimuli. The similar, the similar phenomena we have observed in wireless LAN as well. Due to some packets, the AP can turn into autoimmune system which will attack the clients which were already associated to AP itself. Till then, a food for thought for you, which MAC layer packets can turn AP into autoimmunity. Just have a thought and how the Cisco MFP can be attacked with this autoimmunity attack. Thank you for now. Keep looking securitytube.net for further update on IEEE 802.11W protocol and attacks on Cisco MFP. Thank you.